Making that dream of political office possible for women is imperative for national development and will take the engagement of all Belizeans. And under the auspices of the National Women's Commission, 22 women are one step closer to achieving this dream. The women are part of the second cohort of the Women in Politics project that was launched in October last year. Today, the women graduated after 13 weeks of training. Dr. Carla Barnett did an excellent job this year of dissecting the national budget. A lot of budgetary and economic jargons are in the budget. The average person don't understand. And so she took it apart and... Um, that was part of her presentation. A number of questions were asked. So the women were enlightened as to what the budget is, what, what is the size of the wage bill, why, why is it so big, what is recurrent expenditure, what comes from CAP 2, what comes from CAP 3. Deborah Lewis, a consultant, she did Gender Budgeting 101. How you could use the same type and the same amounts of money in the budget, but redirect your priorities in order to cater better for men, and boys and women and girls. You also look at parliamentary procedures. How do you conduct yourself in parliament? The recent budget debate tells you that we don't want to elect a bunch of women to behave like, like the way some of the men were behaving. We don't want to do that. So how to conduct yourself in parliament? We also look at the constitution. Is the supreme law of the land? Over 40 women graduated from the first cohort and while the program is just in its second year, it has already achieved recognition within the region. The excellence of this project was formally recognized by the United Nations Population Fund last year. WIP won the UNFPA Regional Caribbean Population Awards in December 2010, topping, <laughs> topping eight other meaningful projects across the Caribbean. WIP is cited as one of the ways governments and organizations can help to nurture a critical mass of women into elected politics. The women were handed their certificates for participating in the program, and already some graduates like Shari Williams have decided to run for political office. I feel as if though I came into the project feeling as if though I was a leader, feeling as if though I had that call to serve the people, but I leave the program now feeling as if though I am ready. Williams has submitted her name to run for the next municipal elections in 2012. Keynote speaker Dr. Rhoda Reddock, deputy principal for the University of the West Indies at St. Augustine campus in Trinidad and Tobago, says that women's participation in politics is important because there needs to be a fair representation of everyone. However, she adds, it cannot be business as usual. Women have to bring something different to the table. We have to seek to transform the whole culture of politics, the whole way of interaction, the whole attitude, the some a lot of the dirt, the systems of patronage, the lack of fairness and justice and fair play. And it's going to be difficult because the problems with politics is it's a party system, it's a competitive system. If one person wins, the other loses. So I think we need to look at our political systems to see if they can be transformed from this very winner-takes-all system that we inherited. And also if the culture and the climate of political campaigning, political relationships could become a bit more civil and humane. I also called for women to make their presence felt in Parliament on issues. And for that, women have to be, have the possibility of working together, even across party lines, for particular issues. And I also called for the possibility for conscience votes on certain key issues that are very complex and on which persons may have strong personal beliefs and are often compromised in having to go with the party line. Only a special kind of partnership in which we value ourselves can translate into shared responsibility, a necessary ingredient to move our nation forward. Galilei Kal for Love News.